the lukewarm church hi everyone it's maria maumela thank you for joining me um today i'm carrying on with our bible study of the book of revelation the bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge and today we've got the internet we've got social media we've got so many avenues that are open to us to teach us to clarify things so tomorrow we cannot say um, Lord, I didn't know. Lord, I did not understand. Okay. So that's why I'm making these teachings. So yeah, let's read Revelation chapter three, verse seven. It reads to the church in Philadelphia, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. You know, just reading this, it, it reminds me of the wolves. You know, there's wolves among sheep, but there's also goats among sheep, among the sheep. But there's also snakes among the sheep. So there's just a lot going on. And when you think of a sheep, it's such a... It's a kind of a, of an animal you just want to protect. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's dumb. <laughs> Have you ever seen how sheep are, you guys? Have you ever seen how sheep are? It's like one sheep will follow the other. They're so helpless, so naive. Yeah, that's the right word. They're so naive, you know? So I think it's really funny that when God refers to us, he wants to refer to us as sheep. You know, in my study of sheep, like, I think goats are even more aware of the environments. You know, they're more self-aware. But the sheep, they're just so vulnerable. And there's a sweetness about them, you know. Anyhow, I just, yeah. So the Lord is saying, like, I know your vulnerability. You know, I know your naivety. You know, I know your foolishness. <laughs> you know, the Lord understands our little strength. You know, that is how the Bible says a good man may fall many times. You know, it says a righteous man may fall many times, but he does get up. So let us also remember to get up. The Lord understands that we have little strength. You know, he understands that we are but mortal, that we are but dust. So our best effort pleases the Lord, you know. They please the Lord. Um... And the Lord says, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. We cannot ever deny God's name. We cannot ever deny God's name. Okay, we belong to the Lord. This actually reminds me of the dream that I had where I said, I dreamt that we had been captured by the soldiers and we were put in this classroom. And as we were in this classroom, they asked, um, Actually, as you we were sitting, they kept on bringing in more people up until the point where they just closed the classroom door. And they asked, so how many of you say Jesus is Lord? And I couldn't believe my ears. Like this was just a sudden thing. Imagine you're just walking in town and then you're just being taken with your children and put inside a police van and then taken to this place that looks like a, uh, I can't remember the outside. I just remember that where I was, it looked like a classroom and you just put in this room with strangers. And the guy asked, um, who of you believe in Jesus? Who of you say Jesus is Lord? Like you should have seen this man. He was asking the same thing, just five different, in five different ways. He wanted us to really get it so that no one can say, I, I misunderstood. Like, I, I didn't understand, you know? After he asked this question, it was quiet. I remember I could hear, like, grown men breathe. And I remember in particular, there was this one white farmer. He had this really big beard. And the whole time as he was breathing, I was looking at him as his face was turning red, you know. 
and that's that's the the thing in the dream that i shared i never really gave the description of the people that were around me so i think i'll take a liberty to tell you of the different characters that were in the in that dream i already shared the dream so i'm not rehashing the rest of the dream okay so um as i was looking at him like my heart was beating up so fast i felt like my heart was beating right here you know so i could hear just grown men breathing hard like i'm like no he didn't like this is not how it was supposed to happen this is wrong i felt like the timing is wrong but then how do i like i can't exactly raise my hand and say my brother this is not the time like my brother this is no joke like you can't do this to us it's not the time you know like how dare they I don't know i guess i thought that maybe they'd announce it on television on television that you guys um by the way the persecution of christians is starting tomorrow it's not, it's not gonna happen like that you guys as you're all quiet i mean the 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 policemen were um uh, patient with us they just wanted to see what was going to happen and i have to say that these kind of policemen were different it was i felt like they were just sewn under different what legislation under a different authority they were weird okay so um as we we're in that classroom like i said it was just different races all of us together here in south africa and you could see like you know people were just captured anyhow you know some got, you know when you're being captured you've got your groceries you've got this you've got that like you know you can see everybody was just minding their own business and then there was this guy he was a young man probably in his mid 20s he stood up and i looked at him and i realized that um this guy is a foreigner i could see like he's not a he's not a, a native of of this country he's not a south african he actually got up and he said i believe in jesus and i'm like oh and i feel it is a uh, it was saying that i felt like in that room you know us as the native of the country you know when you're a native of the country there's always a greater level of security for you because you know the people you know the language the tradition the food the place you know but when you're a foreigner you know there is that thing that this is not home you know although when you're in africa you will feel like i'm in africa but like home will always be home so I felt that he was the most vulnerable according to me i felt like he was i felt like it was interesting that the most vulnerable would actually get up like a young man who is a foreigner he actually got up and said i choose jesus i looked at him with so much admiration you know i know you're probably thinking girl you looked at him with admiration i thought you would have been the first one to have your hand up girl dreams will humble you you guys dreams will humble you like the Lord will reveal the security, the insecurities and the fears and the doubts. Guys. So what else happened? I've already shared the dream. Okay. It's in my past videos. Yeah. You know, the end time dreams are so, they are so real. They, they are so real. Um, I think I titled it under martial law. I think I made two videos which were under martial law. So it was under one of them. Okay. I think I was wearing a black, I was wearing a, a black and white blouse. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Let's read. I think now I just feel a sadness in my, in my, in my spirit life. If you have watched that video, you'll understand why I'm feeling like this. Anyway, verse 9. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I'll make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. And the Lord is saying in our obedience, you know, as we keep on keeping on in him, you know, he's going to unmask these people. You know, he's going to unmask people. He's going to bring a lot of people to repentance. A lot of people are going to be humbled and they will end up repenting and they will have to acknowledge that truly, truly God is with you and he has loved you. Okay. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is coming. Mm -mm. Verse 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, 
I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to chase those who live on the earth. I should even just mark this one. So the, here the Bible lets us know that there is an hour of trial that is coming. There is an hour of trial that is coming. Some will call this the tribulation. I, in my own words, I call it the greater tribulation. There is a difference. As we speak right now, there are countries which have long been going through the tribulation, the Middle East and some parts of China and some other countries as well and some other places. Okay. Yeah. So here the Lord is saying like the Lord here is giving a promise. Let me read again. Since you have verse 10, since you have kept my commands to endure patiently. So these people are enduring something. So like enduring uh enduring whatever that's what i would call the the hardships of life and what i would call the afflictions the the sufferings and also what i call also the tribulations like i said right now there are people who are literally being being executed for being believers for being christians for choosing jesus for believing in jesus so since you've kept my command to endure patiently i will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth, even as it is for enduring patiently, as we are seeing natural disasters just sweeping over different countries, sweeping over the world. Every country its own. We are all just speechless. Our jaws are, are hitting the ground. Things are happening so fast. Like we just want to like, you know, when you're in this country, you want to like, I wonder what's happening in that, like what calamity is another country facing? That's where we're at. You know, we are all like speechless. Verse 11, I am coming soon. This is so, this is so refreshing to hear. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Hold on to God's love for you and know that he will come for you, you know, and that um heaven is a promised place for us you know just keep walking your walk in christ keep walking in holiness you know when you fall get up ask god for forgiveness but you need to keep on walking okay um verse 12 him who overcomes i will make a pillar in the temple of my god never again will he leave it I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out from, out from heaven from God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay. Um, do I want to do the next one? Okay, let us do the next one. This is the last one. To the church in Laodicea, this is still Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. To the, church, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. I feel a lot of us fall in, the, in this group, okay? So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth, okay? Um, you say I'm rich. Let me correct that. When I said a lot of us fall in this group, it would sound demeaning to say a lot of you <laughs> fall in this. Or should I rather put it and say a lot of the people in the church fall in this category, okay? <laughs> Like I've, like I've already said, if the rapture were to happen, a lot of people are going. This 50% is going to heaven. Let, let me clarify that, okay? This 50% is going to heaven and 50% is going to hell. Let's clarify the 50%. This 50% does not necessarily mean they're going to be raptured. There are people who are going to go through the great tribulation and will make it through. I, don't, I think, which chapter is it? I can't even wait to get there. Yeah. Anyhow. Verse 17. You say, I'm rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, 
pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Verse 19, those whom I love are rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Verse 19 is just the Lord reminding us that in this life, you know, if we do not, uh, like every once in a while, if we do fall out, the Lord is going to put us back in line. Like he's making that clear because he loves us, okay? Unlike leaving us to just make our way to the grave, make our way to hell. Verse 20, here I am. I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So in this verse, the Lord is saying, I love you. I always loved you. I created you for me, for my glory. You were born to shine. You were born to be happy. Just that you were born into a world that was sinful because of what happened long before you were born. But I sent my son whom I love to die on the cross for you. So repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. You know, if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and that he was born of a virgin and he came on this earth and he died on the cross and you confess it with your mouth, then you are saved. You know, to him, to him, verse 21, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hallelujah. We are done with the letters to the churches. Now we can get to the meat. I feel with the letters to the churches, the Lord was trying to get us to calm down. You know, the Lord was like, these people have written a test and they are sure that they are around a's and b's and c's and they've they've not really done so well they really think they did well but they are about to get the shock of their lives they are not really where they should be the the opening of the book of revelation is humbling the lord is addressing the different issues that are there you know the lord is addressing the different issues that are there like people look at your hearts look at your churches Look at your leaders. Look at your hearts. Look at your own personal lives. Nothing is aligning. Nothing is straight. Some of you, I can see, yes, you're doing good, but oh my gosh, look at that. What am I supposed to do with that? The Bible says, I am holy, therefore be holy. You know, therefore be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Y'all, I'm quoting the word. That's what the Lord says. So we strive for perfection. You already read that the Lord says, I know you have little strength. He sees us as his sheep. That's what he sees us. You can imagine the gentleness and the approach and the attitude that he has towards us, you guys. So I look forward to now getting to some serious teachings. You know, okay, I'm not saying this is not serious. I'm just saying this is just the lord trying to center us like before you even start claiming things like let's just start it there this foundation what you got going on right now is not working you can go on now to read and hear about what's coming but first let us start with this very basis like you see where you're at you see what's happening it ain't working so with these first churches the lord is saying you need to get your house in order my children my sheep my sheep you're busy talking about rap to this and even the audacity now to be um, on, on already on the chapter of the Antichrist. Yet our own houses are not are not in, in order. You know, we are already now there on the, the what being sealed due to what now we are talking about being sealed. Now we even see ourselves as part of the 144,000. Like the Lord is saying, like, are you guys even serious? Are you guys even serious? Get your house in order. So before we even rush to the other chapters of the Bible, let us first, let us, let us chill. Let us chill right here in the churches, in the letters to the churches. The Lord is saying like, my people, you need to get your life straight. You need to get your lives right. You see, 
and it's amazing that the um the the dream that i had where i said we were put in the classroom and we were asked um like who who of you belongs to jesus who of you believes in jesus like i said it was said in so many ways you couldn't have said um i i misunderstood or i don't know english is not my mother tongue it was so clear i mean a child would have understood that from the very first time you know from the very first question because the man was saying the same thing in different ways so with me sharing that dream it's me letting you know that the lord is saying you people you think you're ready i understand you love me you pray but there are some things that needs to be straightened out there are things that needs to be straight in that dream it felt so real like it felt so real it was so real and the sad part about it was that for the next coming days, I was not okay. I was not myself because end time dreams are real and they hit as hard. I felt like I had turned my back on the Lord and the guilt that I was feeling. I couldn't even share it with someone. It was a burden that was on my shoulders. And I kept on praying to the Lord to just remove this burden off of my shoulders. And when I felt like, okay, I'm on the clear now, I'm starting to feel like myself again. You know, it was then that I was actually um, free to even share the dream. You know, and I knew the Lord wanted me to share the dream with these people. Okay. Yeah, so that's enough for this video. So thank you guys. God bless.